Here's a circle. Okay. I'm going to draw a line here, starting here, that's supposed to be the center. And that line represents what? The radius. The radius, right. We'll give it the letter R. R for radius. <coughs> Now, if I take that length, if I, if I take that length and I go along the outer edge of the circle such that the arc length is equal to R, do you ever follow what I did? So I, I took this length and I went that far along the edge of the circle. The angle I get right here, theta, is equal to one radian. So a radian is an angle. Right? And that angle is found when you take the radius and make an arc length equal to that. And the angle you get is one radian. Did everybody get that? So theta is the variable I'm using for the angle. And that angle right there is one radian. Now, let's say I kept going. Right, so I take the radius and I'm going to do it again here, R. So that's another radian. And I'm going to come here, R. It's another radian. So how many radians is that? Three. Come again. How much R is that? That bit there. How much of a radius is that? So I went one, two, three, four, five, six. So 2 pi, Frank is saying it's 2 pi minus 6. 0.28. Which is the same as saying, right, 6.28 minus 6 is 0.28, right? So this is 0.28 of a radius. So the length there is 0.28 of the radius, but the angle here, let me do a different color here, this angle is 0.28 radians, right? So you have one radian, two radians, meaning the angle, three radian, four radian, five, six, point two eight. Because two pi radians in a circle, two pi is six point two eight. Right? Did everybody see that? So if I took my radius and I wrapped it around the circle to this point here. So I went from here to here. I would have one, two, three. How much would that be there? Right, this would be 0.14 R. And the angle here would be 0.14 radians. Right? So let me give you this. How many degrees is that? How many radians is it? Pi radians, right? It's 180 degrees is pi radians, or 3.14 radians, right? 1, 2, 3.14. So that's 1 radian, 2 radians, 3 radians, 0.14. So that's why it's pi radians, because you can get your radius here 3.14 times. How many radians is that? Right, pi over 2 radians, right? Is the angle, it's also 90 degrees. Because if 
this is 180, half is 90. If it's pi radians, half is pi over 2 radians. Everybody follow this? So here's a radian. Right here. One radian equals how many degrees? Fifty-seven point three. Fifty-seven point three. So one radian. Let's do a conversion factor. Three hundred sixty degrees is two pi radian. So three sixty divided by six point two eight is fifty-seven point three degrees. Right, so this angle, one radian, is also fifty-seven point three. 6.28 radians is 360 degrees. Does everybody understand this? How many times does the diameter fit around the circumference of the circle? Huh? 3.14. So that means the radius goes 6.28. Right. So just make sure that you're following this because we're going to use this to measure the physical quantities that we've been measuring, just in a little different way. And this is <coughs> dealing with rotating bodies. And here I've got what am I, my uh, engineering book, and I'm given an axial rotation. And about the long axis here, it spins nice and stable, as you can see. And about a uh, rotating in plane of the book, it also spins nice and stable. So we're not going to pay attention to this complicated rotation. We're just going to look at examples like, you know, like like these two. Nice and stable, or stable see, rotation. About uh, rotating in plane of the book, it also spins nice and stable. Okay. Call the light again, please. Now, so let's take this book, right? I marked a purple dot on it right here. So we can rotate the book, right? So let's say that like the book in the video was rotating, the book is rotating. So how many radians did the purple dot just rotate through? Two. Two pi. Not two, two pi. 6.28, right? It went one radian, two radian, three radian. How many radians? Pi radians, right? 3.14. We keep going. So then we went to 4, 5, 6, 0.28. So right, this is how we're going to measure rotational motion. How many radians does the object go through? If I do this, how many does it rotate through? 3 pi, right? Once when I was 2 pi, then 3 pi. Beginning of the year, we might have taken the, the dot in the book and started it here, and then I'm going to have the book go like this. 
say the space here is a meter between each unit. So I just went three meters. How long did that take? Let's call it three seconds. So what was the speed of the book? What? One meter per second, right? Three meters in three seconds is one meter per second. Now, instead of having things numbered this way, we're going to do it this way. Where this is one radian, this is two radians, three radians, so on and so on. So now, follow the purple dot, it's going to go one radian, two radians, three radians. It takes three seconds. So there was an angular velocity now, right? We went through an angle of radians and how we went three radians in three seconds. So what's the angular velocity? Three radians per three seconds or one radian per second. That's it. You already know all the concepts, right? We're just going to apply it to rotation now. So I have two points marked on the compact disc here, A and B. As the disc rotates, it's going to rotate following the arrow. <clears throat> so for us, it's going to go counterclockwise. The linear displacements for A and B will be different, but the angular displacement will be the same. So let's say that they start here. So they're starting at this point. And then they're going to rotate through, and we'll stop it here. So if that's where A and B rotated to, so then they end up over here. So A and B. What was their angular displacement? Pi How many? Two. Pi over 2, right? It went through. 90 degrees, but we want to talk in terms of radians. So it went through pi over 2. So the delta theta for both A and B is the same. It's pi over 2 radian. And it's positive because it's counterclockwise. However, A went from here to here, and B went from here to here. So who had the greater linear displacement? A, right? A's line's longer. So you would say that delta D for A was greater than delta D for B. Now, in a couple slides, we'll actually figure out what that distance was. But... Angular displacement will be expressed in radians, if it isn't clear by now, and we'll abbreviate that RAD. You want to write this down as an equation in your notebook. So the angle in radians is nothing more than the ratio of the arc length to the radius. So radians is not really a unit, just as degrees is in a unit, it's just indicating an angle of measure. Angular displacement. So the dot is going to go through a series of displacements here. So as it rotates counterclockwise, when r is r, you got one radian, two radians. So if I ask you what is the angular displacement, this angle makes up two radians. Keep going. Three radian, four radian, five radian, six radian. So now this angle from here all the way around to here is six radians. How much is left? 0.28 radian. I'm trying to really drive the point home if it isn't already. So one complete revolution is 6.28 radian. A circus performer does a double backward somersault. What is the magnitude of the angular displacement in radians? 
you know, just what call it. it what? Four pi. Four pi. Right? He goes two pi, four pi. Why did you say zero? Because he got back to where he started. Yeah, but remember, he went through a series of ratings. Let's think it out. Every time a hand goes around once, it goes how many radians? Two pi. Two pi, right? All right. So what we'll do for the second hand, we'll say two pi radian for one time around. How many times does the second hand go around an hour, right? It doesn't matter where it starts. It just, in an hour, it goes around how many times? No? 60, right? It'll tick 3,600 times, but it goes around once every minute. So it's going to do 2 pi radians 60 times. So that's 120 pi radian. Now, who said that? Said what? Negative. Yeah. Negative. Negative. Why? So it's going clockwise, right? Okay, the minute hand, again, every time it goes around, it does 2 pi radian. But the minute hand, which is this one, goes around how many times an hour? Once. So it's just one time around. So it's negative 2 pi radian. And the hour hand also does 2 pi radian every time it goes around. But how many times does it go around in an hour? Right? It only goes between one, of the, one set of numbers. So it goes a twelfth of the time around. So that's negative pi over 6. I'm not sure. But if you think about it, if you got a 3D object that's spinning, what's if I'm over here and it's spinning this way, or let's say it's spinning this way, counterclockwise for me, counterclockwise for you. Right? It depends what side I'm looking at it from. Does that make sense though? I just, I got you. All right, another question built on this. Let's say that we have a minute hand that's 15 centimeters long, and on the tip of the minute hand there's an ant. What distance, linear distance, does the ant go in 20 minutes? Okay. After 20 minutes, where is the minute hand going to be? Down to four. Down to four, right? So it's going to be down here. So it's a four, so the ant will have traveled here to here in 20 minutes. So that means he will have gone in this distance, D. And he will also have gone through some angle, theta, right? And we got R is here. So now we go to this equation, theta is D over R. We want to know D. So what is his angular displacement after uh, 20 minutes? Right, so he would have done 2 pi radian, but in 20 minutes you do a third of that. Okay, and then that is D over 0.15. So it's basically 2 pi over 3 equals D over 0.15. So D is 0.314 meters. That's how far he went. And hopefully you see in this example why we use radial measure. Right, because it's it's very easy to figure out linear quantities because it's all defined relative to the circle. So it's you just multiply, and you have linear quantities from angular quantities because it's all related to the radius. 